Thanks to the YouTube community, we have more details on the 4680 pack than ever before. Today, we're gonna dig into those details and I'm gonna show you why I think Tesla is restricting range in this car and electronically limiting the battery pack. Currently, the YouTube channel Monroe Live is doing a full teardown of the 4680 structural pack and we're learning some really interesting information. The first thing that's been confirmed is the overall configuration of the cells in the pack. So there's 828 cells, which is the same amount that was shown at the Cyber Rodeo event. The 828 cells are divided into four identical modules with 207 cells in each module. There are groups of nine cells that are wired in parallel, and then all of those groups are wired in series. So if you look at the module at the bottom, you can see the alternating red, blue, red, blue. Those are all groups of cells in parallel. And then all of those groups are wired in series. So you see 23 groups in series in each module, which brings it to 92 total groups in series with nine cells in parallel for each group. If you don't know what series versus parallel means, that's fine. I'll explain what it means in a sec. Of course, the big thing with the new structural pack are the 4680 cells. There's a ton of changes with these cells, but the most glaring is the form factor. You can see the dimensions on your screen there. So I went ahead and grabbed some known specs of a Samsung 21700-50G, which isn't the exact cell that's used in the Model 3 and Model Ys, but it's very similar. The capacity of the 2170 cell is about 17 to 18 watt hours. It weighs about 70 grams, and that brings specific energy or gravitational energy density to 250 watt hours per kilogram. So we don't know the exact specs of the 4680 cell, but we did learn some really interesting information from the YouTube channel, The Limiting Factor. He actually sent a 4680 cell to a lab. I'll put a link in the description below, but he actually was able to learn a ton about the cell itself. So the figures he's quoting are a 96 to 99 watt hour capacity, a weight of 355 grams, and that would bring specific energy between 270 and almost 300 watt hours per kilogram. Additionally, there have been some rumors on Twitter from pretty reputable sources about the capacity of these new cells. Troy Teslike is quoting 98 watt hours per cell in these first generation cells that come out in 2022. So we now have two sources of information that both align on around 98 watt hours per cell, which comes out to 276 watt hours per kilogram specific energy. So let's use 98 watt hours per cell and figure out the capacity of this new pack. So we have 98 watt hours of capacity in each cell. Now we're gonna move up to the module level. So we have three rows of 69 cells, which is 207 cells in each module. Since each cell has 98 watt hours of capacity, we multiply 207 by 98. And we see that each module has about 20 kilowatt hours of capacity. If we're talking about voltage, we know that there's 23 groups in series. And so in a series circuit, you actually add voltage. So we'd multiply 23 times 3.8, which is the nominal voltage of the 4680. And we see that each module would be running at about 87 volts. Now we're gonna jump from the module level to the pack level. So we know that there's four identical modules from what I was mentioning earlier. So we take our 828 cells, multiply it by our capacity per cell, and we see the capacity of the entire pack is actually around 81 kilowatt hours. I put the voltage on the screen. It's the same calculation as earlier. Since the modules are in series, you're gonna add voltage across modules. Cool, so 81 kilowatt hours is our calculated capacity. That doesn't sound too crazy on the surface. The 2170 Model Y capacity is right around 81 kilowatt hours as well. But if you look at the EPA rating on this car, it's only 279 miles. If you look at the EPA documentation, they're only getting about a 67 kilowatt hour capacity based on their recharge event energy. And there've been real people with real cars confirming that their usable capacity is only 67 and a half kilowatt hours. So what's going on here? Where is this 14 kilowatt hour difference coming from? The first flaw you could point to in all the calculations I just did is the actual capacity of the 4680 cell. I've heard various people say the 4680 cells are not optimized yet and so their actual capacity is lower than what we can expect in the coming years. But I'm gonna show you that it has to be much lower than what we would expect. If you do a very simple calculation, 828 cells divided by the capacity of the battery, you would see that each cell would only have about an 82 watt hour capacity. And at 0.355 kilograms per cell, 
that would only be a specific energy of 230 watt hours per kilogram. Why would Tesla start producing vehicles with this new 4680 cell if it wasn't even up to par with their current 2170 cell? The current 2170 cell is already as high as 260 watt hours per kilogram. So it doesn't make sense to me why Tesla would introduce a cell that has much less energy density. Also, if you look at the weight of the new Model Y, it's pretty interesting. So the car is lighter, but really not that much lighter. Spoken Reviews, a channel on YouTube, actually weighed his Austin Model Y, and it weighs around 4,220 pounds. In contrast, a 2170 Model Y long range weighs about 140 pounds more at 4,360, so the weight difference really isn't that much. If Tesla really wanted to, I don't see why they couldn't make a 67 or 68 kilowatt hour 2170 Model Y. All they would need to do is remove about 14 kilowatt hours, and so that would remove about 780 cells. And so you could actually calculate the weight savings from that just on a cell level, and that would be about 121 pounds. So in theory, Tesla can make a Model Y today with the old 2170 cells that weighs the same as their Model Y all-wheel drive with the 4680 cells, and the capacities would be identical. So if you believe the capacity is only 67 kilowatt hours on this new Model Y, you're essentially saying that the new weight savings from the structural pack and from the castings are having no effect at all on the weight of the car. I think Tesla is electronically limiting this car to around 67 kilowatt hours, but the actual capacity is around 81 kilowatt hours. I'm basing this on two things. The first one is the teardown shows 828 cells very clearly. And in order for the pack to only have that much capacity, you would be talking about only a 230 watt hours per kilogram specific energy at a cell level, which is simply just not high enough based on all the information we've seen. And then the second piece of evidence, which is really piggybacking off the cell energy density is the curb weight. So the curb weight is only down 150 pounds compared to a long range Model Y, which has an 81 kilowatt hour battery pack. And this new Model Y has improvements with the structural battery pack and castings, which should bring weight down much further. At this point, you think I'm either completely wrong, crazy, or maybe some of what I've said is correct. Regardless, I'm gonna try to bring this full circle and explain why Tesla might be doing this. Based on the EPA rating of 279 miles, if you scaled up the pack from 67 to 81 kilowatt hours, this car would have around a 340 mile range. So if Tesla introduced this car as a long range variant with 340 miles, there would be a lot less demand for the current 2170 car because on the surface, it would only be a 10 mile range improvement, but you're also talking about all new technology, including the structural pack, casting, cells, etc. So there would be a lot more demand for the new cars. I know customers can't specifically order a Texas made Model Y right now, but I'm sure they will eventually as this model has its own specific variant with less range. I think Tesla is limiting this car because they're basically buying time to ramp their 4680 cell production and introduce all of their new technology to the current Model Y assembly lines. Eventually, Tesla is gonna to wanna to build all their Model Ys with 4680 cells, structural battery pack, giga castings, et cetera. So it makes sense why they're not introducing this far superior product right away. This way they'll be able to ramp the actual car capabilities with their production. So demand for one specific model or trim doesn't get too out of whack. Also, it has been a while, but keep in mind Tesla's done this before. I think in like 2016 with their Model S 60 kilowatt hour version, they basically made two identical cars and sold one as 60 kilowatt hour and one as 75 kilowatt hour and you could pay to unlock the full pack capacity. So maybe Tesla is limiting this pack, maybe they aren't. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. I'll also put links in the description if you want to support me even more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.